Hi there, welcome to Anchors for Life. Today we're going to start a brand new series, a series that I'm going to uh, title Unsung Heroes, or if you like, Unknown and Unsung Heroes uh, of the Bible. And uh, the, in this series, we hope to look at individuals that perhaps you've never even heard of, or maybe some of them you've heard of, but you really don't know much about. And, and so we're going to be looking through the scriptures, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament in this series, looking at these quite often unsung heroes. Now, the goal of this series is so that you and I might be able to see and understand from scripture that no matter how unsung or no matter how unknown or, or how small a person may seem to be in the eyes of others, uh, in the eyes of those around them, and maybe in their own eyes, when God uses them and when they are in the right condition to be used by God, God can do great things in the individual, no matter how unsung or how unknown or how small they may seem to be. God can do great things in an individual who makes himself available to God. It's often been said that God is not looking for our ability. He's looking for our availability. And that's what we see in these, what I'm calling, unsung heroes of the Bible, of the Word of God. And the first one I want to look at today <clears throat> is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And for many of us, we might have to dust off uh, 2 Chronicles in our, in our Bible, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we are introduced to a situation <clears throat> of, of Jehoshaphat. Now, Jehosh Jehoshaphat in himself is uh, quite a known uh, a person in, in the Word of God. And what we find is that Jehoshaphat was surrounded in verse 1. He is surrounded by the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and, and others uh, with them besides the Ammonites, came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And of course, Jehoshaphat does what all of us would do uh, when he found himself with a great multitude coming against him, as, we told, as we're told in verse 2, uh, uh, he comes right to the Lord. It says that he feared. And what do you do with your fears? What do I do with my fears? We take them to the Lord. And we bask in the sunshine of his love because perfect love casts out fear. And he's not given us, as believers today, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and sound mind. So Jehoshaphat takes his fears to the Lord. And we read in verse 3 that he set himself, he positioned himself, he set himself uh, to seek the Lord. When we read that verse, uh, he set himself. It means he set his face. He turned his face to the Lord. And this is the direction that you and I go when we are facing fears and struggles and difficulties in life. He set his face to seek the Lord and to proclaim a fast. And so a fast in Scripture, fasting in Scripture, often speaks of self-denial. It speaks of an attitude of heart that's being displayed outwardly. And, uh, and whereas indulgence would speak of, uh, of, of just the opposite uh, of self-denial. And fasting speaks that I'm in the presence of the Lord with a, with a uh, deep concern, with, a, with a, uh, a heavy heart. And I'm coming in the presence of the Lord and I'm denying myself of whatever it might be, whether it be food or other things. And so this is what Jehoshaphat did. And he proclaimed this fast throughout all Judea, uh, uh, all Ju Judah. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. So another feature, not only did they take their fears to the Lord, not only did Jehoshaphat proclaim a fa fast, but thirdly, we see that there was oneness of mind. They came together in unity. When there's difficulties amongst the people of God, how wonderful to see the people of God coming together in unity. 
how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And we are instructed in Scripture that we're to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And so how, how good to see that this is exactly what the people of God did under Jehoshaphat's uh, supervision. And we find that all the city of Judah, uh, cities of Judah came. They came to seek the Lord. So they were following the leadership of Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat then, what does he do? He instructs the people. He comes before the Lord and he cries out and he says, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God of heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hands is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? You, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever, and they dwell in it and have built your you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, famine, we all stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple." And cry out to you in our affliction, and, and you will hear and save. And then he talks about the people, and, and he talks about the impending danger that's facing the people of God, and, and it's facing him, and he lifts us up before the Lord. But what I wanted to point out is, not only does he seek the Lord's face, and get, get his face turning to the Lord, seeking the Lord's guidance, not only does he proclaim a fast, and not only is there oneness of mind and the people are as one, but fourthly, we see something else. He lifts up to the Lord, and he uh, tells the Lord, reminds the Lord of his own faithfulness. And so in this, it's so important for us to feed upon the faithfulness of our God. Psalm 37, that we feed on the faithfulness of God, that we remember how faithful our God is. Now, all this is uh, preparatory to the, the individual that we want to get to. Uh, and that's down, if you look down in verse 12, Jehoshaphat is still speaking, and he says, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. What a position to be in. What a position for us to be in today. You know there's all difficulties amongst the people of God today. We confess that we are not what we ought to be. We are not uh, the testimony that we ought to be for the glory of God. But do we look at ourselves or do we look at, or do we look at others and we point the finger trying to make ourselves look better? Or do we turn our eyes to the Lord, which cometh our help? And that's what we need to do. Brothers and sisters, we need to keep our eyes fixed upon, uh, upon heaven, upon the Lord Jesus Christ, looking off unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, and despised the shame. We need to consider him lest we grow weary. Keep our eyes focused upon him, Scripture says. And so this is what they do. Now, this inter introduces us to verse 13. It says, Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their families, stood before the Lord. What a place to bring the entire company the, the husbands, wives, children, even the little ones, into the presence of the Lord. You know, this is, this is what we need to do. We need to teach our families to come into the presence of the Lord in times of difficulty. And so, now, with all that as a background, that sets the, the foundation for our man. This man named Jehazel, and we, we find uh, Jehazel, uh, he comes in verse 14, 
down to verse 18. And let me read these verses. He says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. Now, I want just to underline this before we continue the reading, that this man, Jehazel, that we're speaking of, uh, this man, his descend he was a descendant of Asaph. Now, if you remember, Asaph was uh, the very one in whom David appointed. Uh, what we find in Scripture is that David appointed Asaph to be the minister musically in the temple. And he was to, to be the one who would raise the voice of praise to the Lord. Now, this is important in the context here uh, because we find that uh, this particular man, Jehazel, as far as we know, he's never mentioned in Scripture. He's never mentioned before this in, in Scripture. Up to this point, this particular man hasn't been mentioned yet in Scripture. And yet, what a profound statement this man makes. And that's what we want to see. We want to look at his history and keep that in mind, that his history was he was a man of praise. He was a man of praise. And he pointed the people of God to their God. Now, let's look at that. In verse 14, it tells us, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, and, uh, and he was, not only was he a man of praise, but he was a man of power. He was in the condition that the Spirit of God could use him for the glory of God, for the strengthening of the people of God. And that's what we find here. Now, we continue our reading, and we see in verse 15, And he said, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, what boldness, what boldness. And when we are people of praise, when we are people of power, there is boldness in Jesus Christ. There is boldness in the power of the Spirit of God. And so he, he comes here. And he says then, uh, he instructs him to listen. And he says, thus says the Lord. He's coming out of the presence of the Lord with a word for the people of God. You know, when we spend time in the word of God, the, word, the Lord will give us a word to share with the people of God. And this is what we find here. We find that uh, he says, do not be afraid. A positive word for a problem day. And this is what we need today. We need a prophetic, powerful, positive word for our day today. And, and we find that here, and this is exactly what Jehazel did. He said, do not be afraid nor dismayed because this great multitude for the battle. Now listen to this. For the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours, but God's. He says here, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Now, this is a powerful statement, and it's an important statement for us uh, just to, to think about because uh, this man had courage. He had boldness to come into the presence of the Lord, and uh, this is what we need today. We need such such boldness to come into the presence of the Lord and with this message that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And how is it that we are going to win the victory? It's not in our own strength, but it's in being strong in the Lord. Listen to these few verses I want to read in connection with this. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 8, we read this. With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. That's 2 Chronicles 32, verse 8. 
In Joshua 23, verse 3, says this. It says, You have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he who has fought for you. Then we read in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 22. You must not fear them, for the Lord your God himself fights for you. And then, lastly, let me just read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, when David faced Goliath, uh, this is, listen to what he says, Then all the assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you, speaking to Goliath, into our hands. David came against Goliath in the name of the Lord. And dear friends, that's where the victory is found. To be strong in the Lord. And this is what we find here in our story with Jehazel. He says, the battle is not yours. He goes on to say this. Tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Zez. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. You will not need to fight in this battle. You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go down against them. For the Lord is with you. You know, when you have the Lord with you, you and the Lord are the majority. You and the Lord are the majority. And you can face the enemy all around you because the Lord is with you. He is an ever-present God, dear friend. And so we want to encourage ourselves with this. And I would encourage you to read the rest of this story because it's a beautiful uh, tribute to what praise does. When we lift our voice up into praise, Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Kohathites, Kohathites stood up to praise the Lord of Israel with voices loud and high. And so before the battle even began, these are praising people. Because there was a man who was a descendant of praising people, and he was in the power of the Spirit of God, and he gave a prophetic word from the Lord, and we see the results. It's a tremendous story of this unknown man and how he turned the tide and how the Lord used him to turn that tide. But listen, it goes on to say this. So they rose early in the morning and went down to the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood up, stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who would sing to the Lord. There it is. And who should praise the beauty of of holiness as they went out before the army and saying, praise the Lord for his mercy he endures forever. What a positive, powerful, prophetic message that Jehazel brought. And because he brought this message, the king was encouraged and because the king was encouraged, the people were encouraged because the people were encouraged they sang praises to the Lord, and the Lord brought the victory. But notice this. He says, I, I love verse 22. He says, Now, when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. <laughs> End of story to God be the glory. How wonderful to see that it was when they began to praise, when they began to praise, the Lord stepped in. And so, dear friend, I want to encourage you today 
I do not know what you might be facing, but I want to encourage you. You may think you're unknown. You may think that you are an unsung hero. You may not even think of yourself as a hero. But I want to tell you that as Jehazel was able to give this positive, prophetic, powerful word, because he himself was a vessel that the Spirit of God could use and come upon, I want to tell you, dear friend, that the power of praise. You think of Paul and Silas in the prison and how at midnight in the darkest part of the night they began to lift up their voices in praise to the Lord and the prison walls were shaken and the result, the end result of their praise was that the gospel was brought to that jailkeeper and to his home. And dear friend, what the Lord can do in your life and in my life, as we begin to praise. The Lord can use you today, even as unknown as you might be. The Lord can use each of us today for his glory. May you be anchored in Christ today for his namesake.